up. Don't make me bust this damn door down. Check this fucking clown out. Help you with something? Yes. Get out of my way. Back the fuck up. Welcome to the world of Sifu, developed by those lovers of martial arts at Slow Clap, whose first game was itself a MMO of sorts with Kung Fu called Absolver. Fast forward some years and they're back again with Sifu, a tight revenge story in the tradition of Kill Bill, with a smooth and dynamic combat showcased in most of Jet Li and Jackie Chan's early Kung Fu film work. But I was surprised to learn that Sifu is a much deeper game than meets the eye. Sure, the combat's probably the selling point for most people, but you'd be surprised to learn that this is probably one of the best roguelike games I've ever played. And I'm not a big fan of the genre. Dang. While what is important to note here is that Sifu is not randomly generated as many roguelikes, but it is very much a game about trial and error, about perfecting your kung fu, which the game even asks in its marketing. The quote is, if one lifetime is enough to learn kung fu. And after spending a lot of time with Sifu, I can say that it is most assuredly not. Sifu is a difficult game. Let's get that out the way right now. If you were fooled into thinking that this was going to be a fun beat em up like jaunt similar to Streets of Rage 4, which itself wasn't an easy game, you might as well forget that. Sifu can be punishing, but it is fair. In my time with it, I was able to tell where I dropped the block or I should have dodged instead of trying to parry. And while some games have a slow burn as they get more and more difficult, Sifu is just hard from press start, honestly. And in fact, it'll get harder as players take their character on this path of revenge. In the world of Sifu, players are put in control of either the son or daughter, the player may choose which, of a kung fu master who is ruthlessly killed in his home in front of their child. So in true Shaw Brothers fashion, the child spends the credit montage training to be a master of martial arts in order to avenge their father. As the real game begins, players will start off 20 years old, fresh-faced and trained to a razor's edge in order to enact the vengeance desired. In their possession, a magical talisman that allows the young warrior to resurrect from any fatal damage at the cost of aging up a predetermined amount of years. You see, as much as the world of Sifu remains mostly grounded, the magical talisman gives players an advantage over their foes. The ability to learn from a mistake on the fly and correct it, thus winning an otherwise unwinnable battle. The more you fall in battle, the more years each death will cost, unfortunately, ultimately leading to permanent death once the magic is gone at age 75. But with age comes wisdom and understanding, and that's showcased in Sifu by allowing the player to become stronger with age, thus increasing the amount of damage done with each strike. But just like real life, with advanced age comes a body's decline, which is presented in Sifu by lowering the player's health. It really is a wonderful system that can be used to your advantage if skilled enough. Those players who spend the most time with the game and really learn the many unique combos, with over 150 attacks in all, will have a much easier time surviving at that advanced age where skill is required more than button mashing. But if players do ultimately fall, and they will, they'll be forced to restart the current stage at whatever age they began it at. So if you don't finish the opening level until you reach age 50 in game, then you'll be forced to play the rest of the game at age 50 until you ultimately perish. In order to restart, a player will need to begin a brand new run, beginning the game over again, which will reset them to 20, the age 20, and they'll lose all of their accumulated skills. Sounds harsh, right? Well, in Sifu, as players progress, they'll find jade idols where they can purchase upgrades for their attacks, but also upgrades to their abilities, such as giving a weapon more durability. The catch-22 is that these upgrades aren't permanent and have an age cap. For instance, the durability upgrade is only available until the player turns 25. If not purchased by then, you'll lose the opportunity to acquire it during this run. Advanced combat moves can also be purchased permanently, but the cost is double and it has to be paid five times. So if an ability costs 750 XP points to unlock, you'll have to pay 1,000 XP points five times to unlock that permanently. 
The plus is you'll keep that ability no matter how many times you die. So in essence, players are able to try various techniques before deciding if they want to use it all the time or not. As you can probably tell, Sifu provides a lot of flexibility where combat and things are concerned. You can tailor the game to your preferred playstyle based on these various upgrades. Personally, I prefer to use weapons as they max out the structural gauge faster, allowing yeah. for the use of a quick finishing move. The aforementioned structural gauge will be very similar to anyone who played from Software's 2019 hit Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. In it, you would attack an opponent's posture before you would finish them with a flashy finishing move. In Sifu, you want to attack an opponent's structural gauge, and by doing so, it'll cause them to guard break and open them up for a finisher. Heavy attacks and weapons do a wonderful job at maximizing damage, and it's possible to unlock an ability that allows players to utilize almost anything in the environment as a weapon. See a chair on the ground? Kick it towards somebody. A bag of cash? Kick it right into their stomach. You get the point. Like I said at the outset, it all feels very much like early Jackie Chan movies where he battled like 20 guys at once. Expect to be outnumbered for the majority of fights, but the fluidity of the block counter system and the responsiveness of the controls will allow even the worst player to become greased lightning with practice. And that's what it's going to take, at the end of the day, to really master Sifu. Practice. Each death is going to be a lesson that is hard learned, but you'll come back and know to try something different. Button mashing will not get you anywhere in Sifu. The combat system and AI will start to block attacks faster and cause players to get overwhelmed by enemies. Again, practice is at the very heart of the game, and to really master it, players will need to practice those combos and not rely on just learning one or two. There are counters for every move, and once you master the dance, it's really a beautiful thing to behold. If you can't tell, I enjoyed Sifu quite a bit. While the story of a young person against multiple assassins who killed their loved ones is not a new setup by any means, it is the fantastic gameplay, the beautiful graphics, and the amazing soundtrack, just to name a few things that make this a truly enjoyable experience. That being said, if you're not a fan of difficult games, I'd recommend probably renting this one first if possible because it is extremely difficult at the outset and it will require a bit of a grind to be successful. But if that doesn't bother you in the slightest, then come on in. The dojo's all set up.